These places are the most protected and restricted areas on Earth, from vaults safeguarding the world's most precious treasures to secretive government facilities shrouded in mystery and buildings preserving the last bastions of untouched nature. Join me, I'm counting down the top 15 most protected places on Earth. Starting with number 15, the Svalbard Seed Bank. The world of agriculture is dominated by a select few cultivars, carefully chosen for their desirable traits. A specific banana cultivar, once prevalent, succumbed to the relentless Panama disease around 1950, leading to its virtual extinction and subsequent replacement by the hardier but less flavorful Cavendish cultivar. This practice of cultivating a limited number of strains for maximum yield, while financially beneficial, poses a significant risk. The widespread adoption of a handful of genetically identical plants makes entire crops vulnerable to diseases that exploit their uniform genetic makeup. The threat of mutated fungus wiping out global corn, wheat, or rice crops within months looms large. To counter this risk and preserve genetic diversity, international institutions have established green gene banks, and the Svalbard Seed Bank serves as a crucial last line of defense. Situated in a purpose-built vault within a mountain on the remote Spitsbergen Island in Norway, the Svalbard Seed Bank is a bastion of security for agricultural biodiversity. The facility, owned by the Norwegian government, operates as a genetic safety deposit box of sorts, where depositors retain ownership of their contents. With the capacity to store 4.5 million seed samples, it can safeguard approximately three samples of the 1.5 million distinct agricultural crops known to exist. Not only is the seed bank totally remote, but the seeds sit safely about 500 feet into the bedrock. Even in the event of a complete power failure, the temperature within the sandstone bedrock remains stable for weeks, hovering around negative 3 degrees Celsius. Number 14. Pine Gap, Australia Pine Gap, situated approximately 11 miles southwest of Alice Springs in the Northern Territory, serves as a pivotal satellite surveillance base and Earth station jointly operated by Australia and the United States. Officially named the Joint Defense Facility Pine Gap in 1988, it was previously known as the Joint Defense Space Research Facility. Strategically located, Pine Gap exercises control over U.S. spy satellites hovering over about one-third of the globe. Its remote location in Central Australia prevents interception by spy ships in international waters. Now, beyond its geopolitical significance, Pine Gap has played a key economic role in the local community. It functions under the auspices of the U.S. Central Intelligence Agency, U.S. National Security Agency, and the U.S. National Reconnaissance Office. Pine Gap plays a crucial role, encompassing programs such as Echelon. Internally, the NRO designates the facility as the Australian Mission Ground Station, while the unclassified cover term for the NSA's role is rainfall. The base features a substantial computer complex that's safeguarded by 38 ray domes covering radio dishes and it's got a workforce of over 800 employees. That's overseen by a senior CIA officer, so it's safe to say this place is full of secrets. Number 13. The Lasco Caves the Cave of Lasco, nestled in the Dordogne area of France, stands as an unparalleled testament to prehistoric artistry. Dating back over 17,000 years, the cave's detailed anatomy and realistic perspective in its paintings elevated to the pinnacle of discovered prehistoric art. Think of it as the most exclusive art museum in the world. Discovered in 1940 by some local teenagers, the cave's entrance led to a mesmerizing world adorned with around 2,000 painted figures. The seclusion of over a millennia had remarkably preserved the vivid colors of mineral pigments depicting animals, people, and enigmatic symbols. The cave is part of the Vesare Valley, having the highest concentration of Upper Paleolithic sites in Western Europe. Among these, the Cave of Lascaux stands out for the scale of its painted figures and the quality of its art. The Hall of the Bulls, a renowned section of the cave, showcases four colossal black bulls, one of which holds the distinction of being the largest cave art animal ever discovered at a staggering 17 feet in length. What sets these paintings apart, though, is the dynamic portrayal of animals in motion, herds of horses, charging bulls, and the graceful movement of felines, cattle, bison, and even rhinoceros. This perspective in painting, unseen until the Renaissance, adds to the cave's significance. Now, interestingly, the whole of the bulls lacks representations of reindeer, a staple prey during that era, and omits depictions of plants or landscapes. Some researchers speculate that the paintings may serve as an ancient star map, concealing constellations within the lines of the animals. 
The Cave of Alaska, once open to the public, closed its doors in 1963 due to the detrimental impact of over 1,500 daily visitors on the delicate paintings. Mold and fungus posed ongoing threats to the cave's preservation, leading to its current status, sealed to all but one person at a time, solely for monitoring purposes. Number 12. Surtsey Island in a sudden eruption on November 14, 1963, a plume of steam and ash emerged from the North Atlantic Ocean, giving rise to a new island about 20 miles off Iceland's southern coast. Named Surtsey Island after a black fire giant in North mythology, this basalt and ash creation has since become one of the Earth's rare untouched landscapes. Over the past three and a half decades, a series of eruptions formed Surtsey, presenting scientists with a unique opportunity to witness the birth and evolution of this volcanic island. Recognizing the scientific value of Surtsey, Iceland's government promptly declared the island off-limits to all but a select few of researchers granted permission to study its development. Even today, access requires rigorous government approval, and once on the island, researchers must adhere to stringent guidelines to prevent contamination by seeds or chemicals. This protective approach extends to drilling expeditions, too, exemplified by a recent effort led by Marie Jackson, a geologist from the University of Utah. Visits to the island must also carefully be timed to avoid disturbing resident wildlife. Jackson's team conducted their expedition after the nesting season for birds concluded in July, wrapping up before seals and their young claim Surtsey for the September season. Scientists, once on the island, focus on collecting data and samples. However, all analysis must be conducted elsewhere to prevent any adverse impact on Surtsey's delicate ecosystem. Number 11. North Brother Island Right between the Boogie Down Bronx and Rikers Island in the East River, North Brother Island unfolds a captivating yet tragic chronicle that has shaped its unique history. In 1885, the city acquired the uninhabited island to erect Riverside Hospital, a facility dedicated to patients afflicted with contagious diseases like typhus, tuberculosis, yellow fever, and smallpox. Among its notorious residents was Typhoid Mary Mallon, the inaugural documented asymptomatic carrier of typhoid fever bacteria in the United States. Quarantined at Riverside Hospital in 1907 after causing typhoid fever outbreaks in eight families she worked for as a cook, Malin, seemingly in perfect health, carried the bacteria. Released in 1910 with strict directives to abstain from cooking, she defiantly resumed her occupation, triggering fresh outbreaks. Recaptured in 1915 after infecting 25 individuals at Sloan Hospital for Women, Mallon remained quarantined on North Brother Island until her death in 1938, steadfast in her belief of unjust detention. In 1905, tragedy struck when the General Slocum steamship caught fire near the island, claiming over a thousand lives, the deadliest disaster in New York until the September 11th attacks. A memorial fountain in Tompkins Square commemorates the victims of this event. It seems that this place was just cursed from the beginning, and it seems like not much has changed. Post-World War II, though, Riverside Hospital was repurposed for war veterans and later for heroin addiction treatment. Its doors closed for good in 1963, leaving the site to deteriorate over time. Currently, it's off-limits to the public. North Brother Island serves as a bird sanctuary now, hosting one of the region's largest colonies of black-crowned night herons. This deliberate restriction ensures the preservation of both its historical significance and its role as a vital habitat for local avian life. Number 10. Heard Island Heard Island and the McDonald Islands, Australia's most isolated territory, lie in the remote reaches of the southern Indian Ocean, over 2,500 miles southwest of Perth, and approximately 2,400 miles from the nearest point on the Australian mainland. This sub-Antarctic archipelago, devoid of human habitation, sits thousands of miles away from any other permanently inhabited land, with Antarctica, located a thousand miles to the south, being the nearest continent. The Kerguelen Islands, positioned about 280 miles northeast of Heard Island, are the only other nearby islands in this vast expanse. Heard Island constitutes the majority of the territory's land mass. It's predominantly cloaked in glaciers. The imposing Mawson Peak, a towering 9,000-foot active volcano, dominates the island's landscape. Notably, Mawson Peak also claims the title of the highest peak in Australia. A mere 27 miles west of Heard Island, the diminutive McDonald Islands form part of a mostly submerged volcanic peak. This volcanic site experienced its first eruption in 1992 after a dormant period of over 75,000 years. Remarkably, these McDonald Islands, along with Mawson Peak on Heard Island, stand as the sole active volcanoes across the entire Australian continent. 
The island saw their first European landing in 1855, subsequently serving as a base for seal hunting. However, the seal population's near extinction led to the abandonment of the territory in the 1880s. In 1910, the United Kingdom formally claimed the islands, and their administration was transferred to Australia in 1947. Today, Heard Island and the McDonald Islands hold the status of a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a Marine Nature Reserve, managed by the Australian Antarctic Division, preserving their pristine, untouched beauty. Number 9. The Korean DMZ The Korean Demilitarized Zone, or the DMZ, straddling the Korean Peninsula near the 38th parallel north, stands as a significant border barrier, dividing North and South Korea in half. It was established in 1953 under the Korean Armistice Agreement. This 155-mile long and approximately 2.5-mile wide zone serves as a buffer area to mitigate tensions between the two nations. With this strip of land, incidents, both military and civilian, have happened, resulting in casualties on both sides. The Joint Security Area, nestled near the western end of the DMZ, serves as a meeting point for negotiations between North and South Korea. Formerly the sole connection between the two nations, Panmunjom, located near the western coast, is the home of the JSA. While originally serving as the venue for Korean solidarity statements, it's experienced a slight decline in tensions over the years. The DMZ's significance is underscored by the Joint Security Area, housing the renowned Bridge of No Return, where prisoner exchanges have unfolded. Landmines and explosives deeply entrenched in the DMZ's Joint Security Area underwent a scheduled removal process initiated on October 1, 2018, lasting 20 days. This demining effort extended to Arrowhead Hill, uncovering Korean War remains and concluding on November 30, 2018. Over the past half century, human habitation in the Korean DMZ has been nearly impossible due to its deadly nature, except for limited incursions around Panmunjom village and the Donghae Bukbu line on Korea's east coast. This inadvertent isolation along that 155 mile long stretch has birthed an involuntary park, now recognized as one of the world's most well preserved temperate habitats. This unique zone teems with life, harboring over 6,000 species of plants and animals, including more than 100 endangered animal species. But among the fortified fences, landmines, and listening posts, the DMZ shelters the red-crowned crane, white-napped crane, and critically endangered Korean fox, Asiatic black bear, and potentially rare species like the Siberian tiger, Amur leopard, and western gray whale. Ecologists have identified an impressive 2,900 plant species, 70 mammal types, and over 300 bird species within this narrow buffer zone, emphasizing the DMZ's role as an unexpected haven for biodiversity. Number 8. Morgan Island Morgan Island in South Carolina, often referred to as Monkey Island, is home to a large population of over 4,000 rhesus monkeys. Located in St. Helena Sound off the Beaufort Coast, close to Charleston, the island has become a focal point of local lore and debate. The rhesus macaque monkeys, originally from Asia, were relocated to Morgan Island in the late 1970s for scientific purposes their numbers growing from 1,400 since their arrival from the Caribbean Primate Research Center at the University of Puerto Rico. The island, which covers 4,500 acres and was previously deserted, was closed to the public with the introduction of the monkeys. A collaboration between the FDA and a private entity oversees the breeding of these monkeys for research purposes. This operation is shrouded in mystery and went largely unnoticed until the early 2000s, when public awareness led to a halt in most research activities. Now under the care of the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases and managed by Charles River Laboratories, the monkey population has seen a significant increase. Despite the island being inaccessible to visitors, it's known that there is no ongoing scientific experimentation. However, the impact of the monkey's population on the native ecosystem has been subject of study. Recent discussions have been ignited by unverified claims of the annual removal of 600 monkeys for research, drawing the public's attention and promoting remarks from Representative Nancy Mace. While it is illegal to set foot on Morgan Island, viewing the monkeys from the water via private or chartered boats remains an option. This island represents one of only two feral colonies of rhesus monkeys in the United States, with the other located in Silver Springs, Florida, introduced under unusual circumstances in the late 1930s. However, due to legal and health concerns, approaching these monkeys is strongly advised against. Moving on to number 7, Greenbrier. Nestled in Sulphur Springs, West Virginia, a mere five hours from the nation's capital, the Greenbrier Resort has long been dubbed America's Resort since 1778. It's hosted 26 U.S. presidents and European royalty, offering more than just luxurious amenities. 
Hidden within its grounds lies a secret known as Project Greek Island, a bunker built in the late 1950s by the U.S. government. This facility was intended as a safe haven for Congress in case of a nuclear conflict. During the height of the atomic age, amidst widespread fears of nuclear annihilation, Project Greek Island was a top-secret endeavor aimed at preserving the continuity of the government. The bunker's existence was known to only a handful of individuals, with the majority of Congress remaining in the dark unless a crisis necessitated its use. Fortunately, the feared nuclear catastrophe never came to pass, and many legislators went through their terms oblivious to the bunker beneath their feet. Despite the secrecy, it's probable that visiting presidents and vice presidents were aware, given their roles in the project's initiation in 1958, a construction that took over two years to complete. The superior supply company responsible for the concrete work was kept uninformed about the project's true nature. To the outside world, the construction was presented as the future site of a new exhibition or conference space. The bunker itself was fortified with two feet of concrete walls and a steel layer, sitting 20 feet underground. More than just a shelter, it was also equipped with an advanced air filtration system to block out any radiation. Inside the bunker housed a special chamber for Senate and House meetings complete with seats and microphones and an expansive room for joint sessions. A television studio was set up for post-disaster communications and accommodations were military-style metal bunk beds assigned to each congressman. To maintain secrecy and readiness, government employees were stationed at the resort under the guise of TV technicians, a cover that raised some eyebrows due to their lack of engagement in typical hotel duties. Number 6. The White House The White House, easily one of the most iconic buildings in the world, it employs sophisticated security measures to safeguard the U.S. President and their administration. Visitors can tour parts of the White House complex, but stringent security protocols are in place. Booking requires at least 21 days' notice for background checks, with U.S. citizens requesting access through their Congress members and international visitors through consulates. Situated in a highly controlled 15-mile flight-restricted zone near Ronald Reagan Washington National Airport, the White House complex is well protected. Surface-to-air missile launchers across the city stand ready to intercept any aircraft not adhering to U.S. Air Force direction. The building has a roof-mounted radar for monitoring and infrared cameras along the boundary detect any temperature variations, alerting security personnel to potential threats. The perimeter fence, seven feet tall with crash-resisting concrete footings, features barbs to prevent climbing. In 2017, the fence height increased to 10.8 feet, equipped with sensors to notify security of pressure on the bars. Bulletproof windows resist impacts from semi-automatic weapons, and the Presidential Emergency Operations Center in the Situation Room beneath the east and west wings ensure continued operation even in a nuclear explosion. In response to unauthorized aircraft in the no-fly zone, warnings are issued and, if ignored, surface-to-air launchers surrounding the White House may be deployed. The Avenger Air Defense Missile System with eight Stinger missiles and an M350 caliber machine gun is rumored to be in place. Stingers are short-range infrared-guided missiles with a two-mile range, suitable for countering small aircraft and drones. The White House's security is enhanced by bulletproof windows, demonstrated in a 2011 incident where consecutive shots from a semi-automatic rifle failed to shatter the glass. Infrared lasers cover every inch of the perimeter, detecting even the slightest threat. While the true extent of White House security remains undisclosed, it's widely acknowledged as one of the most highly protected buildings in the world. Number 5. North Sentinel Island So North Sentinel Island, ensconced within the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, serves as an emblem of isolation and indigenous protection. This archipelago, an Indian Union territory, comprises 184 islands in the Bay of Bengal, strategically located about 300 miles off the coast of Myanmar and 700 miles from India. North Sentinel Island gained prominence in 1967 when the Anthropological Survey of India embarked on a mission to establish peaceful contact with the Sentinelese. This indigenous tribe had gained notoriety for its hostility toward any intrusion, often responding with arrows to fishing vessels and naval ships approaching its shores. However, the first expedition witnessed an empty beach, leading to anthropologists to speculate that the Sentinelese had anticipated their arrival and retreated into the jungle. Tian Pandit, the leader of the expedition, recounted the team's journey through footprints in the jungle, culminating in the discovery of a Sentinelese village. The well-built lean-to huts, each with attended fire and abandoned meals of roasted fish and fruits, suggested an estimated population of 40 to 50 people. 
Attempting to leave gifts, coconuts, iron rods, and plastic utensils during this trip aimed at establishing goodwill, but subsequent efforts in the 1970s and 80s were met with aggression, culminating in repulsion. Number 4. Zone Rouge the Zone Rouge, also known as the Red Zone, stands as a reminder of the unimaginable devastation brought on by World War I in northeastern France. This desolate and forbidden territory emerged as a consequence of the relentless fighting along the Western Front, leaving once fertile land irreversibly scarred, contaminated, and strictly off-limits. The intensity of the shelling during the Battle of Verdun, spanning a harrowing 300 days and ranking among the longest and deadliest battles in history, reduced vast areas of agricultural land into a nightmarish hellscape. In the aftermath of the war, the French government, grappling with the profound environmental and human toll, made a grim declaration. A vast 460-square-mile area extending from Nancy through Verdun to Lille was deemed uninhabitable and unsuitable for any form of development. Zone Rouge is almost like the Chernobyl of France. The soil in this zone is poisoned, laden with arsenic to such an extent that 99% of plants can't survive. The ever-present menace of unexploded shells, remnants of a bygone era further contribute to that eerie atmosphere, rendering the zone a no-man's land fraught with danger. The French government's stark classification of the Zone Rouge at the time encapsulates the severity of the devastation. Completely devastated, damage to properties 100%, damage to agriculture 100%, impossible to clean, human life impossible. Well, in an effort to reclaim this desolation, a specialized munitions clearing agency was established. Over the decades, they've tirelessly worked to reduce the expanse of the Zone Rouge, undertaking the task of destroying hundreds of thousands of munitions. The annual Iron Harvest, where French farmers collect unexploded ordnance, barbed wire, shrapnel, and bullets, reflects this ongoing collaboration to render the land safe. Number 3. Diego Garcia In the heart of the Indian Ocean lies the military stronghold known as Diego Garcia, a strategic U.S. military base that's played a pivotal role as a launch pad for military operations. This isolated outpost, situated on a remote island beyond the borders of the United States, carries a history intertwined with the British Empire and is veiled in secrecy, sparking numerous conspiracy theories over the years. Diego Garcia's origins are shrouded in dispute, with some speculating its discovery during a Portuguese voyage in the early 16th century. The island gained official recognition as Diego Garcia on Edward Wright's map in 1599, marking the beginning of a period of uninhabited solitude that endured for more than two centuries. The landscape dramatically transformed in 1965 when the British Indian Ocean Territory was established, solidifying Diego Garcia's identity. Seven years later, the British and U.S. government signed an agreement paving the way for the construction of a U.S. naval communications station on the island. This facility aimed to enhance communication for U.S. and British naval operations in the Indian Ocean, encompassing both ships and aircraft. Remarkably, within a mere two years, the U.S. erected a permanent base, and by the 1980s, Diego Garcia had metamorphosed into a fully-fledged naval support facility. Often referred to as the Footprint of Freedom, this covert naval base is presently operational, harboring thousands of American troops. Tasked with providing crucial support to the U.S. and Allied forces deployed in the Indian Ocean, the Naval Support Facility also aids oversee contingency operations from Air Fricom, UCOM, CENTCOM, and PACCOM. Given the clandestine nature of Diego Garcia, concurrent assignments for DOD or military couples are strictly prohibited. Tours of duty on the island typically extend to a year, although some civilian personnel have found themselves stationed in this mysterious outpost for durations spanning up to 15 years. Diego Garcia, it remains a symbol of military prowess, its secrets guarded by layers of security and a strict access protocol, perpetuating its aura of mystery in the vast expanse of the Indian Ocean. Number 2. The Pentagon The Pentagon, situated in Arlington County, Virginia, stands as the nerve center of the U.S. Department of Defense, boasting the title of the world's largest office building with a sprawling expanse of six and a half million square feet, encompassing five floors above ground and two below. Within its confines, the Pentagon functions as a self-contained city, accommodating around 23,000 military personnel and 3,000 non-defense support personnel. 
Now, despite its colossal exterior, stepping inside the Pentagon offers an unexpected contrast, with its interior resembling more of a cityscape than a conventional office building. The complex houses amenities akin to a shopping mall, including an athletic club, 20 fast food outlets, a full-service restaurant, and numerous retail shops and professional services. A central feature of the interior is a Pentagon-shaped five-acre courtyard, which during the Cold War sparked intrigue from the Russians, who believe it harbored a missile silo. A bullseye was placed in the courtyard for satellite viewing, a practice eventually replaced by a snack bar. In the aftermath of the 9-11 attack, the Pentagon witnessed the establishment of the Pentagon Force Protection Agency, tasked with securing occupants, visitors, and infrastructure. This agency encompasses diverse personnel, including U.S. Pentagon police, criminal investigative and protective service agents, threat management agents, and experts in countering chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive threats. Currently, the Seaburn Division comprises 32 dedicated personnel, with a total strength of about 45. Tasked with responding to the Pentagon and its facilities, the division plays a critical role in safeguarding a daytime population of up to 35,000 people. Responding to several hundred calls annually, the division hires experienced personnel from external sources, conducting hazmat certifications in-house. Additionally, Pentagon police officers undergo training by the Seaburn Division, covering hazardous material operations level and the use of Level C chemical and respiratory protection. Fun fact, the Pentagon is also heavily guarded. In fact, they even have a contingency plan for a zombie apocalypse. Number 1. ADX Florence Sitting somewhere in the arid foothills of the Rocky Mountains, a mere two-hour drive from Denver, stands the pinnacle of high-security incarceration in the United States, the U.S. Penitentiary Administrative Maximum Facility, or more commonly known as the ADX. Recognized as the solitary federal supermax prison, ADX Florence in Colorado caters to the most perilous and escape-prone inmates within the federal correctional system. This formidable institution houses nearly 400 male inmates, including notorious figures such as El Chapo, the elusive drug kingpin, and the Unabomber Ted Kaczynski, among others with infamous backgrounds. Unlike conventional prisons that may impose solitary confinement as a punitive measure for limited durations, ADX operates on a distinct paradigm where the entire facility can be likened to a perpetual state of isolation, earning it the moniker the Alcatraz of the Rockies. In the claustrophobic confines of ADX, inmates spend 23 hours a day confined to their 7 by 12 foot cells. The provision of meals occurs through a slot in a cell door, and the only glimpse of the outside world is offered through a narrow slit of a window aimed at a vacant sky, deliberately designed to prevent prisoners from familiarizing themselves with the prison layout. No inmate has ever successfully escaped from ADX Florence. For the limited 10 hours per week when inmates are allowed outside their cells, they remain isolated within individual cages. Even during these brief respites, restraints can be severe, with feet and hands shackled and tied to a belt around the waist or cuffed hands restrained within a black box. The majority of the ADX structure is above ground except for a subterranean corridor linking cell blocks to the lobby. Inhabitants of each cell contend with Spartan furnishings, desk, stool, bed, and amenities constructed predominantly from poured concrete. Security features include a toilet that shuts off if blocked, a time shower to prevent flooding, and a sink devoid of a potentially hazardous tap. Cells also have polished steel mirrors, electric lights under the control of the inmate, a radio, and a television screening, recreational, educational, religious programming, mainstream channels, and Netflix content. ADX Florence is a fortress of surveillance and control, equipped with motion detectors, cameras, and an intricate network of 1,400 remote-controlled steel doors. Prison's control center remains vigilant 24-7, enabling officers to activate a panic button that promptly seals every door if an escape attempt is suspected. The perimeter is fortified with pressure pads and 12-foot razor wire fences patrolled by heavily armed officers, emphasizing the impregnability of this solitary citadel in the American prison industrial complex. Thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time. Thank you to our channel members.